Hello everybody, we're back again today and uh, I don't know what happened with last part three's video. Uh, I tried to upload it to YouTube and they made me make it in two sections. I hope you guys caught both set, uh, sections of that. Uh, it gave me a lot of trouble uploading it. I don't know if it's something I'm doing with the camera or if it's something with YouTube. Um, but back at it today and we're going to disassemble the head today. And uh, I'm by myself here, so I'm trying to try and work the camera and um, <clears throat> get the valves and the retainers and the valve seals out. And uh, this, and that's the type of tool I like to use. Yeah, they're, they're not real expensive. Either. This is an OTC um, 4572 is the part number. It works real good. So I got the first one out. I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. So I will set up for this one. And these are a lot easier to do than the exhaust valves. So we got a little screw adjustment here. Actually, we can go down a little bit more. This will do all kinds of heads for you. Um, you know, Chevy, Ford, whatever you're working on. And then we just turn, just turn this side. I think you can see that okay. Just turn that side and we'll start compressing the spring. Okay, let me try and get you in here so you can see the retainers coming out. Okay, right in here are the retainers. Well, they're not going to come out with the magnet. We're going to have to see if we can't fish them out of there. The intakes always stick more than the exhaust for some reason. a couple light taps and the retainers will come out okay there's the second one in our clamp here and back up for you Try and get you in on that. Right here is the valve stem seal. That one's hard as a rock, it's supposed to be soft rubber. That's the valve seal, and that will sit down in here. And then when you put your retainers, your, your little keepers, it'll keep that press down in there. So uh, don't forget to put your valve seals in and don't forget to take them out. Uh, they do get, like I say, that one's that one, I can actually crack that one if I squeeze it. 
Um, they do get very hard and you can start using oil if they go bad. So uh, that's how you get the um, little keepers out. The valve is just going to slide right out of there. These are very big intake valves. This is a two inch intake valve. Um, very big uh, for, the, for the little engine that it is. And that'll come out. Okay, there is your valve guide. And these come out a lot easier uh, than the exhaust valves also. And uh, I'll go grab my uh, valve guide remover and uh, be right back with you. And I'll show you how those guides come out. Okay, when you're uh, removing or installing your uh, intake valve guides, um, they're properly installed when they're flush with the casting. Uh, and I'll show you how to set the exhaust ones as well. But um, they'll come out a lot easier than the exhaust. They're, they're shorter and stuff. So just, I got my little remover tool in there. And it'll just pop right out without any trouble. A lot easier than the uh, exhaust. And uh, tap them out. And then we'll, I'll show you when we put this back together. We'll, we'll um, install new ones in. We'll ream them. And uh, we'll set them to the right depth and everything. And uh, I'll show you that when we start putting stuff back together. So I'm just going to uh, take the other two out. And then the head will be ready for uh, cleaning. Uh, this has a little hollow in the center. Uh, this will have to be uh, uh, resurfaced and certainly has to be cleaned. That will go in a hot tank. We'll get new springs and uh, new valves and stuff. And it uh, won't be long before this head's going back together. Okay, there's the completed cylinder head. Uh, valves are out, guides are out. Uh, it's ready to be uh, cleaned. You can see all the junk that was in there. This is why you want to, uh, if you have access to a hot tank or you got a machine shop locally that can uh, soak it for you, you want to get all this junk out of there. Uh, otherwise, it'll just be floating around your cooling system. Uh, that one had quite a bit of junk in it, but uh, that's ready to go now. And this one's finished. This is for engine number two. I've got them labeled one and two. And uh, we're going to let Matt take the other one apart. He's not here today, so hopefully he watches this video tonight and figures out how to do it. So next time he comes, we will see how he does on the second head. He did pretty good on the exhaust springs, so I don't think he'll have too much trouble on this. But um, at some point, you uh, got to learn how to take things apart and get your hands on the tools and, and start doing it right, you know. So uh, trying to show him the way. And on the end of the bench there, I'm setting up a cylinder head from an L head to be machined. Uh, there's the cutter next to it. Uh, just getting my uh, my jacks under it and figuring out what uh, studs I'm going to use and things like that. And uh, when I do that, I'll take you over to the milling machine and, and show you the process. And then we'll jig up these, uh, these F heads and do the same thing. And... Um, like I say, I'll take you and show you the process along the way. Um, when these F-heads, or at least one of them, gets back together, uh, you know this one's going in the back of the snowblower Jeep to power the snowblower. Um, I have some clutches apart. I uh, had a couple of Rockford clutches. And I took a SAE uh, number 3 off of an engine because I thought that was going to be the size I wanted. Uh, number five is going to be too small, can't handle the horsepower. Uh, number three is a bit too large, uh, so I'm looking for a number four uh, uh, Rockford PTO. Um, 
and I'll take you over and show you the number three so you can see the size of it and stuff and uh, show you what I'm looking for. Okay, there's a shot of the number three Rockford. Uh, that's the flywheel and your gear that's bolted to it. And then over your flywheel bolts goes the uh, bearing. And there is the unit. This came off of a Ford 300 uh, engine. So that one's a little too big and that's a number three. So you see how they're they're round in the back. That's a uh, SAE size and number four is just right. So um, the clutch shouldn't be too hard to find. I've got to get a flywheel that's going to fit and then I'm going to balance everything together when I send the crank out. But um, it's a long shot but uh, I'm trying to find, so I don't have to make it, the uh, adapter from the back of the Willys belt, uh, back of the Willys engine. It's kind of like a short bell housing, so it went from um, Willys uh, back of the engine, and the back of the engine is actually a SAE5 on the F head. Um, so I need to get from 5 to 4, so it would be the bolt pattern of the back of the engine, and then it would be around number four SAE size. I'll take you over to the back of the engine and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, back in the day they had uh, a short, maybe about as long as this uh, this tube right here, they had a short adapter bolted to the back of the engine and then uh, on the snow blower at least uh, that would have been an SAE 4 and then your clutch would bolt right up to that. And they're kind of important because the starter, you know, is on that side. So that has to still go in and engage your flywheel teeth. And I have been searching and searching and searching. And I cannot find that adapter. Uh, it's not going to be too bad to make, but I just didn't want to have to make it. Um, so it would go from back of the Willys engine to an SAE size. So if anybody's got anything like that laying around, um, you got an old industrial engine, it's got that little mini bell housing on it, um, could be in anything, you know, it could be in a, a welder, or a generator, a light plant, anything like that. If you got anything like that, um, I could use one of them, uh, I'd be happy to buy it from you. Uh, it's just been extremely difficult to find, and I have... Or I think I have access to uh, a few more clutches. I don't know what sizes they are. But um, if you had a whole assembly, SAE4 Rockford and that adapter, that'd be fantastic. Otherwise, I'll keep digging. But um, like I say, if anybody's got anything, just shoot me a comment. So, we've got two bare blocks. Uh, the head is just about finished on number two. We'll get number one torn apart, and we are ready to start some machining. And still looking for a machine shop that will welcome me in their doors, but uh, so far, nobody yet. So we'll do as much as this rebuild in-house here as we can, and a few things that need to be done, such as boring. Uh, I'll show you guys how to cut the valve seats and stuff. Um, we'll get the crank and the whole mass there when I, when I figure out what flywheel I'm using. Uh, crank, rods, pistons, flywheel, the whole rotating assembly will go out and be balanced. And I'd really like to bring you some footage of that, but we'll just have to see how that goes. So, here is the valves I just took out. Everything is in its proper place here. Got some new old stock valve guides to put in. Got some new old stock rods. Actually got a whole bunch of valve guides. Um, so, things are moving along. Um, kind of slow, but uh, still making forward progress. Uh, I've got uh, a Scout T90 rebuild to do tomorrow. And uh, maybe I'll take you along for that. 
and you can see right down there I've got my farm truck in here uh, that's an O uh, what is that O3 2003 Ford F350 and that thing is just rusting away from me real fast just did some brake lines in it this morning and it is grimy under there but um, that'll be out today and the 3B welder Jeep will come in next and we'll get that F head out of here out of there and uh, we'll get it in here and we'll just keep working on these F heads here's that L head that I'm setting up there's the cutter that I'm going to use to cut that and I will do some cleaning some crack checking um, maybe a quick blast if I can get that in a little blast cabinet uh, get that orange paint off there this is Oh, got it backwards. That is a Kaiser Supersonic head. And you remember when uh, uh, that was 47, we went supersonic. And everybody jumped all over that. So, a lot of supersonic stuff came out in 47. And uh, this is a late head, and Kaiser was still labeling supersonic. And uh, it's just how they did things back then. But um, I believe that's going to be a very good head. We'll get that planed up, and uh, if anybody needs that, that'll be available. That was just kind of an orphan head I had laying around. It's time to clean it up and uh, get it ready to go on an engine. And we'll get that F-head one looking real good, too. So, hang in there with me, and uh, show you a few more things I got going on, and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, I gotta end this one short today. Uh, my fuel pump just showed up for this uh, Ford truck here. Uh, the first one they sent me was wrong. So I gotta get that fuel pump in, get this guy out of here. Uh, it's taking up a lot of space and I've got some things to do. Um, it's so rusty underneath that uh, this sheet of plywood in here is actually covering a big hole that I cut to access the tank from the top. Um, it's amazing how fast these trucks rust out. Um, you know, I see Jeeps from the 40s and stuff that are in much better shape than the newer stuff. Uh, it's just terrible what's happening with the new trucks. So, um, if you guys got new trucks out there, put something under there. Fluid film or some kind of coating to keep them nice because, I mean, this one is just falling apart. And like I say, it was so rusty I couldn't take the tank down. And the bed was so rusty in here that it was just easier to get the, get the saw out and cut a massive hole in there and access it from the top. So, fuel pump is here. I want to get that in. Uh, I'm supposed to get down, you know, 20 below zero with the wind chill tonight and stuff. And uh, there's some other things I need to get in here. So, got to get jamming on this. But um, <clears throat> thanks for watching. Uh, just a shorty today, but I will be back uh, with another video soon. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a machine shop in mind. And hopefully, can take you along for a trip and uh, show you the beginnings of machining the parts. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.